are you? It's two minutes, I'll be there, I'll be there. Hi! Sorry. Missed you. I missed you too. You look stressed. Is it work? God, life at office sucks. By the way, how's your boyfriend? Oh, don't, don't. Just don't ask me. You know, these managers are like the worst people on earth. He'll be like, we'll keep on having meetings and meetings again just to find out why no work is getting done. Engineers are really boring <laughs> and I'm stuck with one. Oh, as if being a physicist is really cool, right? At least we're smart people. I know. You've been working on your paper for like 10 years? I'm presenting it next week, okay? <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, it's not as easy as writing C in A plus B <laughs> on a bloody computer. Oh, sure. By the way, Mikhail, there's something we need to talk about. Are you fine? Yeah, okay. We'll talk after the movie. After the movie and the shopping, you mean? It's Sunday. Shopping is mandatory. All right. That movie was shit. I thought it was fine. You have such bad taste. Hey, you wanted to tell me something that time. I do. I don't know how to start. What's the matter? You know you can tell me anything, right? So, you remember we went to a candlelight dinner last week? Yeah, that was great. My father's acquaintance saw us. So, you mean your parents know about us now? Yeah, but it's not that simple, you know. They're never going to agree to us being together. Why wouldn't they? I have a good job, a house, and everything a father would ever wish for his daughter. It's not that simple. I'm a Kannadika Brahmin. Hmm. You're a Christian. They're never going to agree to us being together. My father, hmm. maybe. But my mother, never. Okay. I have an idea. What is that? Just let my parents speak to them. That's not going to work. It's just going to make matters worse. All right, then. Just tell them you're pregnant. <laughs> Will you ever grow up and start taking things seriously? Even if I go and say that to my parents, they'd rather disown me than get me married to you. For once, try and understand what I'm trying to say. You know what? You're never going to understand. You like just go to hell. Excuse me? Hey. Hey. Can I meet your parents sometime? What will you tell them? Mm, you don't worry about that. I'll talk to them. Are you sure? Yes. Kausalya Supraja Rama Purva Sandhya Pravartate Uttishthana Rashar Dula Kartavyam Daiva Malikam Kausalya Supraja Rama Purva Sandhya Pravartate Uttishthana Rashar Dula Kartavyam Daiva Malikam Sanu, when is he coming? 10.30 Hello Ma, where is he? It's already 11 o'clock. He said he'll come at 10.30. Amma, it's been just 10 minutes. Appa, please tell her no. Anna Suya, he must be stuck in traffic. Eh? Let's wait for 10 minutes, no? I don't even want to see him. Amma, please be nice. Sanu? Hmm? You will be final, va? 
Will he take good care of you? He's perfect. Appa, trust me. You won't find a better man for me. Aha, we'll see. He's already late. Okay. He's here. Please don't mess this up. Amma, Appa, Mikhail. Hello, Uncle. Mikhail. Manjuna Thegide. Hello, Auntie. Namaste. So, how are you and how's your family? I'm good. Everyone's fine at home. Uh, was there traffic while coming? Yeah, there was traffic at the junction. And that's why it took me so long. Uh, okay, yeah. okay. Uh, tell me about your parents. Actually, uncle, my parents had a love marriage. Are? Why are you even asking all of this? No, Dapa, we are not going to accept to your proposal. Not that we are narrow-minded, but we are protective about our kids. You are from North India. We speak Kannada. The society will not accept. You are a Christian. We worship cows, but you people. You people even eat them. Amma, I can't believe you said that. I'm so sorry. Sorry, son. Uh, she might have put it wrongly. But inter-caste, inter-religion marriage, it's not an easy thing. It's, it's all right, uncle. I understand. But I really want to spend the rest of my life with her. Love and all is okay, but have you thought about the religion the children will follow after marriage? Yes. We will follow our own religion and our children will follow the religion they want to. Aha! People say thousand words. <laughs> a good beginning makes a good ending, auntie. Uh, son, do you promise to take good care of her and keep her happy? Yes, sir. I will. Because I love her. I think I don't have any issues. Hey, no! Have you lost it? What will I tell my amma, appa? Your parents, you will tell the relatives that our daughter is married to a Christian. Huh. Auntie, I really don't know who I am. Huh? What do you mean? Yes, you're calling me a Christian, right? I really don't know if I am one. Huh? Mikhail, what do you mean? Karma. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, what are you trying to say? What is he saying? Please listen to me. Hey, Sanvi, you told us he's a Christian. I'm telling the truth. I really don't know who I am. I'm telling you. I really don't know who I am. What's happening? One person and one problem at a time. Mikhail, what are you saying? I'll tell you. I'm telling the truth. You know when Gandhiji was in Kolkata during 1947? Gandhi come into the picture? Gandhiji was in Kolkata at the time of independence. But what point do you want to make? I'll tell you. It was the midnight of August 1947. The long-awaited independence had finally come. Nehru and Party were celebrating in Delhi. Jinnah was celebrating in Pakistan. But on the other side, both Punjab and Bengal were burning in the fire of communal hatred. The situation in Kolkata was like a civil war. On the streets, you could have seen men killing each other in the name of an unseen god. Women were pulled out of their houses and they were raped and maimed. The whole city of Kolkata was covered in the smoke of communal hatred. The fire of religion had burned down all the houses to ground. The dagger of belief had cut the flesh apart. In those smoke-filled streets, there was peace walking in white. 
The fire of religion did not burn him. The dagger of belief didn't cut him. Because all religions respected love and peace, that was none other than Mahatma Gandhi. While walking in those lonely streets, he came across a boy. Maybe six to seven years of age. His parents were dead. And somehow that little boy managed to survive the cruelty. Lost in the cruel world, the boy walked towards Gandhi with his bloody hands. What appeared strange was the way he was dressed. He was wearing a topi and a saffron shawl. He had both tilak and taviz. Maybe his father had him disguised to save him from both Hindus and Muslims. That day, his father's love saved him from religion. Gandhi decided to take the boy along with him. He grew up in Sabarmati Ashram. That boy was my grandfather. He did not follow any religion, nor did my dad. My mom is a Christian. She taught me Christian values. That's how I became a Christian. Auntie, please don't separate us based on religious differences. Yes. After all of this, my mom finally agreed to our marriage. Five years from then, with this cute couple, who are going to be three soon, I am Sandhi and this is my story. One thing, one thing that I find so hard to understand is why do people have to kill their own daughters or sisters to save their family honour? Was it her mistake that she fell in love with Rahim instead of Ram? Because she was Sita? Or is it a crime to like a Jatwa because she's a Jat? Globally, 20,000 women are killed in the name of Maryada Hatya or honor killing. In India alone, more than 1,000 women fall victim to this fallacious act every year. When all religions teach us to love and live peacefully, why kill someone just because they liked a person from another caste or religion? There is absolutely no honor in murder. To honor is to protect, to defend and to love. We're getting married. Why didn't you tell me about your grandfather before? That's because I made it up. One second, what? You made all of this up? Hello? That was all a lie. Huh?